Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. As I said in a previous gain appreciation video, this job that I do is a lot of fun. I get to request amplifiers I've always wanted to try and then put them through their paces. Last time we took a look at the rocker verb and we got nice and heavy with it, but this time we're going to roll back a little, chill and get familiar with the AD30, Orange's twin channel Class A valve rectified vintage style rock amplifier. Let's start with a general overview of the design beginning with those twin channels. While these are completely distinct, separate signal path channels with two gain stages apiece, they're not a clean channel and an overdrive channel as you might expect. This is doing the vintage amp thing of having two channels which are largely the same, but one is voiced to be thicker and warmer, while the other has a touch more treble and gain. This gives you two different voicings to suit different guitars, or different parts of the song with different levels of aggression. Each channel features a master volume control at the end of the signal chain which is completely out of the circuit when at maximum, so if you're the type of true vintage fan who has an aversion to the losses incurred by master volume control loading, then you can blow your ears out with this in tonal bliss. The AD30 is great for edge of breakup to mid-level overdrive sounds. It's very loud, but easily overdriven. While this can be clean, it's not really a clean amplifier. There's not much clean headroom here, this is designed to be driven and saturated. The valve rectifier sag and EL84 power valves keep the sound thick and compressed when driving hard, really nailing that vintage rock amp on 10 sound. Don't expect that tight articulate low end from the rocker verb, there's a spongy give to the lows here which screams vintage amplifier. While this can certainly be pushed into savagely heavy territory with use of an overdrive out front, it's not designed to be a metal amp, that's what the rocker verb is for, nor does it have any of the additional features. You won't find an attenuated spring reverb or even an effects loop on this. This is a proper two channel vintage style amplifier. With regards to the effects loop, there's a good reason why you don't see effects loop crop up very often on true vintage amplifiers. Most of them were designed before pedals like delays and modulations were really on the market, so it was never a consideration. But the AD30 is a vintage poser, having been designed in the 2000s, so why doesn't this have an effects loop? Well, think about what you'd have to do to implement one. You'd have to break the connection between the preamp and power amp in order to add a buffer at either end, either using transistors or more valves, in order to convert the impedance to work with pedals. Not only is this additional complexity, more parts and cost added to the amplifier, but the amp has to be specifically designed for it. With a lot of true vintage amplifiers, the way in which the preamp and power amp interact is a large part of the dynamics, response and sound of the amplifier. Splitting them apart in order to add effects loop buffers destroys that interaction and the sound suffers as a result. I assume the AD30 is taking its vintage inspiration seriously and is designed with this kind of entanglement of preamp and power amp. Furthermore, while effects loops can be very useful, there's nothing wrong with running pedals directly into the front end of a distorting amplifier. Sure, reverbs, delays and modulations are going to act a bit differently in this arrangement, but that might just produce some excellent sounds, and it's not like guitarists haven't been running delay pedals into the front of distorting amplifiers for decades. We've got some pedals we're going to run into this during the demo. As for notable users, Jimmy Page used a pair of these with Zeppelin relatively recently, and you don't get a much bigger endorsement than that. American rockers Buck Cherry used AD30 combos on their first UK and European tours, selling them on orange amps from that point forward, and even Black Veil Brides got in on the AD30 action, driving them hard for their specific brand of eyeliner laden heavy metal. The AD30 can clearly cover a lot of ground and we're going to explore that here. We're going to start with some cleanish sounds and then crank the gain through its range and see what kind of filth we can get. We'll also throw on the Maxon Apex 808, the best of vintage screamers, to see what it sounds like with the front end driven a little harder. And as promised we're going to run a couple of pedals you might not expect into the front end of this. We've got a retro vibe and a delay Lama Extreme both from Jam Pedals, all being powered from the K Plus modular power source from Anasounds. As before the air is being moved by this orange vertical PPC212 with the Neo Cream back speakers and the sound is being picked up by this lovely pair of Lewitt microphones. <laughs>
Amplifier makes me so happy. It's exactly what I want a vintage style British rock amp to sound like. It's got those sparkling pushed cleans which are useful in so many scenarios but then you can drive the gain harder and it saturates and distorts so easily. We've got the reactivity of the rectifier sag and I just love the way EL84s sound. What this lacks in clean articulation and headroom it more than makes up for in thick wading distortion that is a joy to get lost in. If I were to choose between the AD30 and the Rocker Verb it would be a very tough choice indeed. While the Rocker Verb has the flexibility and features which arguably make it the more versatile amp, the AD30 sounds so good and has such range in its specific vintage niche that if you need that sound, choosing the AD30 would be a no brainer. For me personally with what I do here the AD30 is probably the better choice. I already have a very good outboard attenuator in the form of the Boss Waza Tube Amp Expander and I'm far more interested in having the best tones as opposed to having all the features. However, if I was a gigging musician in a low down and filthy metal band, then the rocker verb would probably make more sense. While I try to talk myself out of spending money on yet another amplifier, you might want to check out the links in the description to get an idea of the price and perhaps even pick one up for yourself. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. Keep it loud and stay safe. Orange, hi! What's the best price you could give me in this AD30?